we have time for two or three questions. One back here and one over here. Yes, sir. Hi there, uh, Simon Galperin from the Community Info Co-op. This is a question for Ori and the Knight Foundation. Given the Trump administration's role in dis and, dis and misinformation and rhetoric that has led to the death of journalists from Maryland to Turkey, well, what are we supposed to think about you being here, telling us about how we should be interacting with our communities and ways that protect democracy and uphold our values? And to the Knight Foundation, what are we supposed to think uh, about this conversation in juxt juxtaposed to the conversation we were just having before about how important diversity, equity, inclusion is? We used words like love, we talked about Reiki, and now we have an administration up on this stage that is actively working against everybody in this room. So I'd like to ask Ori why you think you should be here, and the Knight Foundation why they think Ori should be here and deserves to speak to us. Well, I would say before Ori answers, I will say Ori was invited to provide a, a view from the White House where he could speak freely on what he could talk about and that that was not going to include, regardless of who was in power, speaking about certain topics. And so I don't, I'm going to let Ori answer that question in his own way. I'm certainly not speaking for him, but I will state on behalf, I think, of the Knight Media Forum and certainly myself who extended the invitation, that I welcomed the fact that he was willing to come to what some might have considered was hostile territory. So I am absolutely aligned with your commentary. I understand where it comes from, but not everything can be answered when you represent any political party. So I'm going to ask Ori to answer what he can answer, and I thank you very much for the question. So I'm going to go back to something you said a couple of minutes ago when you were talking about the Philippines. Um, there is a danger to only seeing one side of an issue, to only seeing one perspective. Um, and to only being willing to listen to one perspective, and in that particular example, to only having one source of information. Um, the reason I have confidence in our country and in our democracy um, and in the American people to find the truth is because there's a multitude of sources of information. Um, there are a lot of examples abroad where um, really tragic violent incidents have happened because of um, disinformation in WhatsApp groups, for example closed networks where other information isn't able to get in there. Um, and so I'm always happy to have conversations with folks who disagree with me. Um, I have a lot of liberal friends, and I think you know, we all have different perspectives. If we're not able to talk about those perspectives, we're going to get more and more into our silos, um, have a harder time understanding people who disagree with us, and that's not good for the country. Thank you. We have a question over here. Yes. Uh, thank you. And thank you for being here. Um, uh, my name is Rick Timms, and I teach at Queen's University of Charlotte. And as I'm hearing you talk today about um, who can regulate uh, the web and how or should it be done, I'm thinking back to the earliest days of radio. And the earliest days of radio weren't regulated uh, until it became necessary, and it actually was uh, precipitated by the sinking of the Titanic, where uh, the uh, radio operator couldn't get back to, to shore. And so government intervened at that time and said, there's, there's a reason here for us to do something. Uh, the same thing happened with television. This, of course, is a different era, and it's a different time. But I'm curious to know what parallels you think there could be for where we are now and how, and why is it not appropriate for there be, to become some kind of a balance between the owners of the medium and, uh, and government to, to regulate. Daddy, why don't you start? Um, thank you, that's an excellent question. Um, you know, I was just talking to a sort of a media historian who said that with both radio and television, it took about 30 years, roughly, from the advent of the technology to the sort of settling down of the um, both business and regulatory framework that became, you know, sort of the commonplace for both of those media. Um, and so, you know, I don't know that th there's some magic to the to the idea of 30 years. You know, maybe with the internet, it takes 40 years or 100 years. You know, the, but I but I do think that um, you know we are at an early stage of figuring out how this is all going to work. Um, these technologies. Technologies. They don't feel that new. We've been living with them for a long time, but they're relatively new, you know. Um, uh, 
Um, and I do think there's a parallel. I mean, you know, uh, people talk about censorship and so forth, and I think, you know, part of that has to do with the fact that people perceive, um, and rightly so, or, or justifiably so anyway, you know, Facebook to be a platform rather than a publisher, and that's a very, obviously, open debate that I'm sure many in this room have thoughts on. You know, um, uh, you know when it comes to TV, um, you know, no one is um, guaranteed the right to a half-hour daily news show on NBC. And no one seems to think that's an injustice. So there are gatekeepers there deciding what kinds of content you have access to and what kinds of content you don't have access to. When it comes to Facebook, people think that is an injustice. And I get why. These are participatory platforms. You're, you know, checking in with your grandkids and you're, you know, you're talking to your friends and you're posting photos from your birthday party there. Um, I do think that, um, you know, the word censorship is a bit of a boogeyman. The idea of gatekeeping who's got access to mass media um, is um, something that we've all accepted and I think justifiably so. I think um, some um, ideas um, have no business getting a platform. Um, and so, um, you know, that's actually, th that history with radio and TV is part of why I am so enthusiastically in support of, of you know, um, a more aggressive regulatory framework when it comes to social media. Please join me in thanking this panel. Thank you so much, Judy, Teddy, Ori. Thank you.